This is my medical school, my alma mater, the place that made me a doctor. But if you told me that I'd be studying in this school just a year before I got in here, I would have probably thought you're crazy. This is how I got into my dream medical school. Hey there lovely person watching YouTube if you new here hi my name is Ajay I'm a doctor from Bangalore India if you're already subscribed welcome back i love you to the stars and back there are two reasons i'm making this video first because it's an interesting story i was this chill and have fun kind of guy in 11th grade and in 12th grade i had a sort of a eye opening moment i got my act right i studied and got into the best medical school in my state and second reason is i'm also making this video in hopes of inspiring someone to get into medicine if that's what they want let's start at 11th grade i was told to work hard in 10th grade so i did i stood top of class and i got into the college that i wanted now if you guys don't know we call 11th and 12th grade as pre university college here and because i got into the college i wanted i thought i had made it in life and i could now just chill so i chilled i was in the college cricket team i was in the college marriage team we won quite a few competitions i was a singer for my college band the memories of me singing still gives me nightmares so don't worry i'm not going to make you listen to me sing i also bought two musical instruments in the hopes of getting more of um, opposite gender attention i didn't learn to play either if you're curious i would go on stage every chance i got and i had awesome friends and there was a mcdonald's nearby so we would hang out there after classes and get high on fries and coke this coke so i would bunk my classes in the pretext of uh, cricket practice or some other practice and i would go out and chill with my friends like any other 16 year old guy who has suddenly got a lot of freedom would do as you can see i did everything else other than studying and at this rate i could have never become a doctor but one day it all changed enter dr shriram gubbi in the beginning of 12th grade my entrance coaching classes which i had not taken seriously till then conducted an award ceremony for my senior batch a lot of my seniors had scored entrance ranks below 10 below 20 etc a lot of high achievers basically on the same day they had arranged for old students who were now really successful to come back and you know talk to us about their life and experience and all that stuff and shriram was one of them shriram was an intern at bangalore medical college bmc for short and bmc is probably the best medical school in my state it frequently comes up in the top 10 top 15 medical schools of india so in my coaching classes uh, bmc had this cult like following of people wanting to get into it the feeling in my class was that if you get into bmc somehow you made it in life but it's actually quite difficult to get into bmc less than 0.5% of all the people who write the exam even qualify to enter the school and because it's a government run school there is no quote unquote management quota basically you can't pay ridiculous amounts of money and buy yourself a seat if you're not eligible to get in as you can imagine i had never imagined that i could get into bmc i mean i wasn't even sure of wanting to get into medicine i was okay with engineering i loved physics i still do i would have probably become an automobile engineer you know build cool cars and stuff i'd probably be working for tesla right now but that day shriram spoke about his experiences and life being in medicine being a doctor and i don't know what exactly he said that appealed to me so much but at the end of his speech there was this uh, proverbial dawning realization that first thing i have to get into medicine second thing i have to get into bmc the place where this guy studied i'm not saying this just because i know shriram watches my videos and sometimes comments on them but this man is a bit of a genius after bmc he did his internal medicine residency in new york and his endocrinology fellowship at national institute of health which is the best medical institute in the us and probably arguably in the whole world and he was awarded his fellowship a year early because he was so good and now he is a faculty he is an assistant professor of endocrinology at national institute of health he's technically dr fauci's colleague and he is just 5 years elder to me is also an amazing artist but coming back to me you guys know that i had zero foundation i had had fun i was chilling 
and I faced a very, very uphill task. But I did it. I don't know how I pulled it off, but I did it. I dropped out of the cricket team, Marat's team, the band, everything. And I just focused on studying. Nothing else mattered. I studied like I was possessed, possessed by this idea of getting into medicine. I studied six, eight, 10 hours per day, and I solved tens of thousands of questions. I had not taken the entrance exam classes I was attending seriously till then, but then I started to pay attention. So they used to conduct these grand tests every two or three months. And the first three toppers basically used to get a textbook of their choice as the price. So like I said, my class was filled with people above my league and getting one of those textbooks was a big honor, at least for me it was. So I tried. The first time I didn't get it. So I was like, Fine, I'll try again. And the next exam, I took it very seriously. I took it as if it was my final exam. I studied really hard for it and I did it. I got like second or third place. I don't remember exactly, but more importantly, I got a textbook and this was my first taste of success. That day I felt like, yeah, I can probably do this. And that made me study even harder. Towards the end, a few months before the exam, I stopped attending coaching classes altogether because I was more comfortable studying on my own. I bunged a lot of classes in college and made my friends give me proxy attendance. Hey, don't tell my teachers about it. And yeah, I studied with all that extra time I had and I got a good rank in CET. We had an exam called CET Common Entrance Test back then. NEAT wasn't the test, CET was the test to take. And I got into BMC. Sriram had just graduated from BMC the year I entered BMC, but he used to still come and study in the library. So I became friends with him. He later moved to the US for his training, but we still keep in touch. He comments on my videos and I hope he never stops doing that. So in hindsight, if I look back at why I was quote unquote successful, it was probably because first I got a great dose of inspiration from someone. I, I wanted to emulate their path. Second, I was highly focused. I studied only what I needed to study. Third, I sacrificed the things that I had to sacrifice. Fourth, I surrounded myself with friends who were really focused and Actually, I think this helped a lot because when you have a group of people around you with the same hashtag goals, it kind of becomes a easy and sometimes fun journey. And point number five, I was lucky as well. If anyone who has ever achieved any level of success in life tells you that luck doesn't play a part, that's just BS. Of course, you have to work for it. You have to be deserving of it. But luck definitely plays a part in everything. So I wish you good luck. So that was it. Hopefully this video inspires someone to work harder and get into medicine if that's what they want. I have another video about how I cracked tough entrance exams, the basically the strategies and principles that I used and another video about how I study long hours without getting burnt out. I think that is important when you're talking about, you know, these tough exams. So hopefully you'll find those videos interesting as well. Good luck, happy studying and I'll see you in the next one.